This is an image of Jupiter's moon Europa, taken by the Galileo spacecraft in 1998. You'll probably notice that Europa's surface, which is made of ice, has tons and tons of cracks, but I want to direct your attention to this weird repeating arc pattern. Each segment of arc is roughly 100 kilometers long, and there are a lot of these arc patterns. Most of them are ridges raised up above the surrounding surface, though a few are troughs. After they were discovered, their shape reminded scientists of a mathematical curve called a cycloid, so the Europa curves are called cycloid curves, though technically they're not cycloids. These curves are weird. Geological and astrophysical processes are really good at making round features, or straight features, or wavy features, but what causes repeated arcing cycloids? Well, we think that the European surface is made of frozen water at least several miles thick, which we believe is floating on top of an ocean of liquid water. This means its surface kind of works the way tectonic plates do here on Earth, spreading apart and generating new ice, crashing together and being subducted, and so on. And here on Earth, plate tectonics has caused cycloid-esque curves all around the Pacific Ring of Fire. Our best guess for how the Pacific arcs form here on Earth is based on the geometry of what happens when the ocean plates get pushed under continental plates. Because the Earth's surface is curved, you get a similar effect to what happens when you dent a ping pong ball. You might get a circle, or if you press harder, multiple circular arcs. Cycloid curves. However, this doesn't appear to be the answer on Europa, because there are so many cycloid curves and they overlap in tons of places, and none of them really show signs of one piece of the surface being pushed under another. The current best theory for the origin of the European cycloids has to do with Europa's weird tides. Jupiter, which it's orbiting, causes tides on Europa, but they're not from daily rotation beneath a tidal bulge, the way tides happen here on Earth, because the same side of Europa always faces Jupiter. No, Europa has tides because its orbit isn't a perfect circle. It's ever so slightly elliptical, so as Europa moves closer or farther from Jupiter, the nature of Jupiter's gravitational pull changes. On the scale of the whole moon, these tides manifest as a kind of squeezing and stretching, which due to the interaction of geometry and physics, results in any given point on the icy surface being pressed together at one time in the orbit, and then stretched at a later point. And the aspect of tides key to understanding the cycloid curves is that the direction of the compression and stretching changes over the course of each orbit, rotating around like the hand on a clock. Specifically, the compression tension direction rotates clockwise in the southern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, and it takes one orbit to complete a full rotation. So when there's enough stretching tension to form a crack in the ice, the crack will start propagating, perpendicular to the tension. But remember, the direction of tension is changing. If, say, the crack is growing to the east in the northern hemisphere, the counterclockwise changing tension will curve it up away from the equator. As Europa continues orbiting, the tension will eventually turn to compression, so the crack will stop growing. Growing. The compression angle will continue turning, though, and by the time the pressing turns back to pulling, the direction will have rotated back around enough that the crack will make a sharp turn when it starts cracking again, after which it resumes its upward curving trajectory. There's probably a little more subtlety due to a stress-strain process called tail cracking that helps the sharp corners form for each new segment, but this is basically the best current theory explaining the European cycloids. Cracks grow because the tides from Jupiter create tension in the ice, and that tension direction changes over time, curving the crack. Then the process repeats again, starting the crack off in the original direction, curving again, and so on. And that's how waves form on a frozen world. This video was supported by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope project at the Space Telescope Science Institute. There's still a ton we don't know about Europa. For example, the Hubble telescope has detected what we think are plumes jetting from Europa's icy surface, perhaps water spouting up through cracks, and if so, the plumes could give us insights into the oceans beneath. The James Webb Telescope will use its powerful thermal imaging and spectroscopy to investigate Europa's plumes and to study the geologic activity, tides, and tectonics of Europa and other outer solar system planets and moons hopefully answering questions about how they formed, how they continue to behave, and whether they have conditions amenable to life.